Welcome back everyone. Please don't be mad at me for doing the work that you see now without filming it. So this is looking up into the porch off of the kitchen. So I'm on the front left corner of the house when you're looking at it from the street. I've ripped off the shingles, the sheathing, and then the ceiling out of this room. And I am now going to kind of... Uh, do some repair work on those rafters, probably sister some of them, maybe add a few more in places to make the sheathing easier. So it was just easier to kind of tear it off than it was to kind of uh, get in there and start figuring it out and working on it. Another issue is this whole corner on here is sunken in. If you look down in here, got this jack coming up, this two by four spanning from the corner of each wall and then I've jacked it up and then you can see the light coming through right there. I've got it jacked up probably only like an inch right now and the thing I wanted to see was is if I did some jacking was it going to wrinkle the satting because this aluminum satting you know, I didn't know did it uh, sink before the satting was put on and then it was satted straight or did it get satted and then it sink so that was my question there are sort of some, I mean, this is a, a goofy little small foundation over here. It's only four inch cinder blocks, and there's actually a section right here that's kind of wobbling as soon as the weight came off of it. So I got to kind of address some of that. You can see the sattings bulging out here. That's actually the band joist is kicked out at the bottom. So that needs to be like pushed back on. I don't know how much of this stuff is stuff that happened or just the way it was built when this porch was built because you know a lot of things like this porch for example I'm sure this was put on here afterwards and you can tell by the varying style of construction but um again this corner is sunk so I'm going to try to push it up as far as I can without it doing anything nutty to the satting because the satting of course is attached to it and then as soon as you go trying to uh, rack that satting the satting really it's it's aluminum satting it has nowhere to go so it will kind of start to buckle and stuff like that and you go too far you'll wrinkle it so I'm just going to go under there, jack, see how far I can go, and then uh, stop as soon as it starts becoming a problem. Then I'll have to address everything else that I'm throwing out of square by doing this, for example, the door. Here we are on the porch where I just ripped off those cedar shakes from behind where these rafters connect and I've got this big gap. Happens to be just about an inch and a half so the plan is to cut off all the nails that are on the ends of all these rafters. I'm going to slip a 2 by 6 up in there between those rafters and the sheathing, screw it off on the wall and connect all these rafters into that. Um, so that'll be a really nice firm connection make up for that gap. I'll do anything I need to do along the way when you're doing this type of stuff you kind of having to uh, compensate for things. You know, you're integrating normal building practices into and slash rigging it up. So it's a lot of rigging up and um, renovations of older houses. The last two rafters here on the end, the rafter tails themselves, uh, uh, the rafter tail ends of the rafters were rotten off. Um, so I'm going to just replace those. I may just use some new 2x4s or I've got some old ones over there because these are actually 4 inches versus new 2x4s are 3.5 inches. Um, it's referring to their rough sawn size, not their planed out size. And a long time ago, lumber was not planed, it was just rough sawn. Hence, the marks on there. A little trivia for you. Um, so that is what I am doing right now while I'm trying to decide whether or not I want to make this porch more of a finished space or just leave it sort of this screened in porch. Because right now it's really close to being a kind of nicer closed in porch. All I would need to do is just pop off all of these, uh, this paneling, which is just some thin boards, like half inch tongue groove boards, and then put insulation in there and kind of resheath the interior walls. I'd get rid of these shelves right here and then have windows installed. I did this on my own house and like it a lot. So it would be nice on this and this would be overkill for a rental but this is my consideration uh, 
thinking forward when I sell this house down the road, I think that this feature would be quite valuable in adding more dollars to the house or just getting my price that I would like to get. My battery died and now it's the next day and overnight it was forecasted to rain and it did so I had to leave you all in the dust and get this place under roof so I got the sheathing up and the black paper on and I think today I'm going to do some work here inside make some of the changes I want to make um, but let's go outside first and I'll show you a view from out there it's extremely windy so if I talk it'll sound messed up here we are Sheathing's up, paper's on. Not a lot to say about that. I do need to fix the fascia and the soffit. Some of the things I didn't show was, I don't believe I showed mounting this last rafter and then putting up these boards here. So these are some of the sheathing boards that were on the roof. I just put those up vertical, spaced out behind them with some strips of wood, um, put in some pieces of 2x4 going vertical, attach them to and some other strips and then put that last rafter up. So that kind of ties everything together and that kind of finished off that open area that, um, uh, that w before was just you could go right through into the kitchen because this had a ceiling in it. So what I'm doing is I'm not going to put a ceiling back in here that would have been level with that uh, line you see over there. I'm just going to leave it open so it makes the whole thing seem a whole lot bigger. 
and I'm going to run electric through, put a light in here, or two lights since it's long. And I think I'm going to tear out all of this paneling on the walls. So this never had anything in it, but they sat it over one of the areas. This thing used to be screened all the way across, I'm sure. And now it is uh, just um, it's uh, siding over that on the outside as well on the other end. I hope this wind's not affecting things too much. But all of this wood, it's all peeling. If I paint it over, it'd be a mess. So the easiest thing to do is just tear it off and put something new back on there and end up with a good, uh, clean surface to paint. I think what I'll do while I have that off is I'll go ahead and run electric and insulate this room. And then if I decide to put windows in it, it's uh, just going to be part of the house. So that would be really nice. And then I could replace that door with something better than what's there. And this will be normal living space. I'm going to end up putting probably a layer of OSB down in here just to smooth out the floor and put some sort of outdoor carpet in here uh, or office type, that little like tight low thin carpet just in here just to be a nice new surface and then um, uh, just be better than this current floor. The current floors have got a few little soft spots here and there um, so that uh, just 716 OSB will just kind of skin over the floor, smooth everything out, then I'll slap down that carpet. I believe that's all there is to say. Not having fun at all. That's not something you need to tell me is okay. Not every day is fun. Not every day is guaranteed to be fun. Not doing this for fun. And it certainly isn't. Here is how much things are jacked up. But stuff is rather wonky. Uh, for example, I can just reach up and tip that thing over. It's just a four inch center block wall. Long and the short of it before I over talk it. I gotta bust that whole corner out and I'm gonna put a six by six. I have to dig down for some sort of a footer and then put a six by six up into this corner. Um, what I've got rigged up here, everything was jacked up with this bottle jack up to that little four by four, but then I put this um, other four by four here and that is being braced by that board and then this board, so that's kinda of gonna take the load of the porch um, at the moment. I'm just going to knock the corner out so the rest of it will be here even if all that dropped, which it's not. Um, and then do the rest of the work. So let me get started.
let's go in for a closer look. This is what happens when I get mad. Probably don't sound mad, but I am. I didn't really want to cut them down, so I guess I'm not too angry. There's all the bushes. I will relocate them. They were all up against the house anyway. It kind of caused a problem. Um, this way I can easily work on this, do it all from the outside. So I'll do everything from the inside underneath, which is stupid. So I'm going to do it all from the outside now. Dig down, put some footers, put 6x6 six six wood posts up in spots where they're needed. Um, probably going to leave the concrete steps because they're fine. At the same time, may put a chain around those and drag those out the way as well and just put a little small uh, set of steps, wood steps going up. Probably leave these bushes right here, um, but who knows. That was kind of fun jerking those out of the ground. These are very, very hardy bushes. These are called privet hedge. Um, uh, got these in front of my house and they have been over nine feet tall. When I first moved into my house, they were as tall as a newspaper mailbox, so I don't know, three feet. Now they're like eight to nine feet tall, depending on where you're standing, and I grew them into an arch at the top of my sidewalk, so they can go from something like this to massive in no time, and the fact that I scarred them up doing this little bit, it's no big deal. Um, you cut these things back in springtime and through the summer, um, cutting them, they'll grow like crazy, but that has nothing to do with anything. Um, spent a lot of time today, wasting my time, but ended up going full throttle. Sometimes it's good to just check to see if a lesser expensive option might not be so involved and, you know, I've certainly kind of opened up a can of worms doing this. Now I've got to kind of go at it. Let me look underneath. I know what a lot of you are thinking. Why don't you just tear the whole thing down and rebuild it? Because it's a whole lot more involved. Um, and, I don't know, I wouldn't buy crap whole houses if I was just going to tear them down. Um, you know, there are certain times when you do something like that, when the real estate itself, the land, is worth so much money. But, you know, I'm buying cheap places. Take my time, do it as I can, even if it makes me mad. Um, and eventually I get them finished. Uh, this house down the road, no telling what it'll sell for. You know, when this whole street turns that I'm on right now, and I own most of the houses. Um, so, uh, you know, I can change the value of the entire street, um, not just a single house. Um, so once I kind of get them all fixed up, I can uh, sell them down the road, and I've already recouped all my money, probably from renting them out. Um, owned them for a while, renting, then sell them, my guess is this house will sell for 150000 or more um, when I end up selling it. And I know plenty of people out there don't believe me, but they have no context of you know, where I'm doing stuff and the exact uh, variables at play. And of course that will be in play.
I think that pretty much wraps things up for this video. Next up, I'll be addressing how I'm going to close the little uh, crawl space underneath that porch in, as well as getting back on the inside of it and start kind of framing up some different things. How I want to need to reframe the door. I'm going to reframe for some windows. And I'm going to do a little bit of framing in the rafters, some, do some blocking to kind of tighten it up since it's a, kind of a big span in some of those. Um, run some wiring uh, for lighting and some receptacles on the porch switch. Uh, and then there'll be, you know, insulation and whatever I sheathe the walls with and trim and all that in the future. So the outside, I mean... The inside of that little porch is going to be pretty nice. The outside will just be matching with the rest of the house. I'm not really changing much on the outside, except for I'll be putting in a new door, um, painting, and then, of course, the roof work and gutters. Uh, I think that just about does it. I think I'm going to go to Home Depot and buy a bunch of Milwaukee cordless tools. I'm tired of having cords attached to my tools, so I think that it would be nice to... Uh, already have the drill set of a drill and a driver um, and I've got a 18 volt planer um, as well that I just use in my like workshop but uh, I want I think I want a circular saw really like the idea of the chop saw the miter saw the um, and then the I like the idea of all of it I think they are making some really neat stuff this is not an advertisement it's just I get asked questions a lot and I use mostly Milwaukee, as far as any kind of cordless stuff goes, Sawzall. I want a, a cordless Sawzall. Um, but uh, just uh, tips. Um, I'm also getting asked a lot in every video uh, how I'm buying houses this cheap. Even though I mention it in every video at the end to check out my book. It's $4.99, I believe, on Amazon. And then you can also buy it directly off my website, and that is a PDF. So if somebody likes to have something in print, you can buy it as a PDF and print it or read it on whatever you got. Uh, you don't need the Kindle, a Kindle device to um, read the book. You can just get the Kindle app and that will go on anything. It doesn't even have to be a real phone. It can be just a phone with no phone you can get on the internet with or a computer or whatever it is you got. Um, yep. Um, get a lot of other people asking questions about all, all kinds of other stuff too. Feel free to email me. I do my best to answer. And of course, I'd like to get back on that Launchpad channel that I kind of started and stopped and make some more of those videos. i got a lot of thoughts running through my head of videos all the time, and I just don't get around to doing them. I think that's pretty much it. Check the links in the description below. Anything I forget, I'll put comments, links, and stuff down there. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.